Good afternoon. My name is Anne Marie Korschmidt. I'm the associate publisher and the general manager here at NJ Biz. I'd like to introduce you to a couple of folks on our team, Melissa Goyne from our events department, and Eileen Roman, who is a senior account executive in our advertising department. We're happy that you could join us today, and this is being recorded and uh, will be shared uh, with others. So, as I mentioned, uh, on the promotion that we did for this, I'd like to go through our 2024 NJ Biz nomination process. We have so much happening at NJ Biz in our events department in 2024, some new things, some existing things. So I thought it would be helpful to walk some folks through. If you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question, or if it is easier for you, you could put your question in the chat. But or you can hold it till the end and there'll be opportunity at that point. So let's get started. NJ Biz, we do about 12 recognition events each year. And you can see from what's on the screen, we cover quite a bit. Uh, the dates that you see on screen are our event dates. Nomination dates vary usually about 10 or 12 weeks prior to the event date. But if you go to our website, njbiz.com slash events, you'll see all of the uh, nomination dates listed there. What we've done this year is we've added a few new opportunities last year that we've carried over, such as our Veterans in Business, which is in November, and our Empowering Women event, which is in uh, November as well. So I'm just gonna quickly go through um, each of the events and then on the next screen, I'll talk about some updates that we've made to them. So our Leaders in Finance event is just that. We honor those in the financial community, the same thing with law, real estate, construction, design. These are all self-explanatory, healthcare heroes, leaders in digital technology, our ICON Awards are where we, we are honoring executives over the age of 60, 40 under 40. We're honoring those under the age of 40. Our Best Places to Work program is a bit different than our other recognition events. Our Best Places to Work is a deep dive um, survey program. So we do this in partnership with a company called Best Companies Group. If you sign on for that, there's a fee and what, what you get for that fee is they will survey your employees and they will anonymously get the feedback, analyze it and supply you with some very detailed reports that are very helpful. In addition to that, they will send us the rankings for everyone who participated. And at NJ Biz, we then honor the top in that uh, 150 in the New Jersey community. So our part of that happens on September 26th. But if you go to our website and click on best places to work, it'll take you to best companies group where you can see more in depth of what they offer. It's amazing. I've, I've reviewed the reports that they provide and it's, it's valuable, valuable information. Best 50 Women in Business, I'm going to talk a little bit about that on the next screen. Our Veterans in Business, we are honoring uh, military veterans who are making an impact in the New Jersey business community. Empowering Women, that is a program that is for organizations that are doing great things to empower women, not only in their company, but in their community. And then our business of the year has been around for many, many years. And um, we've done some updates, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So that's just an overview of the various events that we uh, have each year. Okay, what's new in 2024? We've added in our leaders in finance program, a rising star category. And we've done this because we've heard your feedback. So each year, after each event, we do a survey. We're always asking um, our readers for input. And we heard, listen, these are great awards. Leaders in finance is wonderful. 
but there are so many people who are doing amazing things in the industry, but they can't compete with the you know, owners, senior vice presidents who have 20, 30, 40 years of experience. So we've added a category rising star for more of the folks who are in the beginning of their career, but making amazing strides. We've done the same for our leaders in law program. And this one, in addition, we've added a category for pro bono firms. Now, leaders in finance and leaders in law, both are programs for individuals to be recognized. But on leaders in law, we've added this pro bono firm because we believe that there's so many great things happening um, in New Jersey on the volunteer altruistic side and law firms who are doing great pro bono work, we'd like to honor. So we've added that in new in 2024. This one I'm so excited about. Our leaders in real estate construction and design awards are a few years old and they have been doing great. We have added a category or a subcategory almost for top projects. And this is where we will honor the top projects in the state. So if you look at the nomination form, it's very detailed and it could be a project that is in commercial or industrial or road work. So if you've done or worked with someone who has a top project in the past year and a half, we want to hear about it. Uh, this is something new to us, but at NJ Biz, we're part of a larger company, Bridge Tower Media, and Bridge Tower Media has several publications dedicated just to the real estate industry. So they've been doing a pro top projects program for many years, and we reached out, we asked them, hey, can you help us get it started here in New Jersey? And they did. So I'm excited about that, and I look forward to learning more about the top projects. Moving on, healthcare heroes. We've added a few new categories there that we haven't recognized in the past. Ambulatory care, mental health, and physical therapy. And these are all under our organizational um, nominations. So once again, we listened, we heard, we don't fit into any of these other categories, uh, but obviously these are very, very important areas of that industry. Next up, leaders in digital technology. We've kind of stretched that out. If, if you're in the blockchain or artificial intelligence arena, we want to hear from you. Be part of this program. 40 under 40. Every year we do this. This is one of our most popular events. We get hundreds and hundreds of nominations. And what we've seen is that we we have amazing, amazing candidates for this. But as I mentioned on other programs, we're seeing people who are mid or you know upper in their career. And there are so many people doing amazing things that are not in the 30 year old, 30 to 39, but under that. So they just can't compete because they don't have the same number of years. Now, don't get me wrong, we've had many honorees in their 20s, but we wanted to kind of pull out a, another subcategory so we could recognize those. So if someone feels that, hey, I don't want to compete in the with the entire you know, category up to 40, I want to be in this 20-something category, they have that option now. And that will allow, so we'll have 40 under 40, and then we'll have another set of honorees in the rising star category. Once again, that brings me their best 50 women in business has been with NJ Biz for, oh my gosh, over 16, 17 years. We are now changing it up a little bit. It is now NJ Biz leading women in business. And we've done this for similar reasons. We don't want to be limited in the women that we can honor. So this is a program where it gives us the ability to expand. And if we have more than 50 women who reach the top, we're not limited. So we, we decided to make that change in 2024. Empowering women. We are adding a summit. It is a, a work in progress right now, but it will happen mid-November 
and it will be a full day summit where we'll have a couple of panels, a keynote speaker, um, a lot of networking opportunities. So I just wanted to mention that although it's not a recognition event, the summit, it's something that we feel so excited about adding to our 2024 events that I thought it was worth a mention here. And then last but not least, another long-standing uh, program with NJBiz, our business of the year. We have changed it up this year. Now, those who are familiar with past years, we have had a format that was finalists and then a winner gets chosen. Well, each year we've seen just extra, extraordinary companies and the scores are so close that we decided let's move from this nominator, not, I'm sorry, from this finalist winner format to an honoree format, which is a format we use in all of our other programs anyway. So we'll still have the same categories, but instead of someone being called a finalist, they'll be called an honoree. Instead of someone being called a winner, they'll be called an honoree. Also, last year, we added a category for family businesses. And I, I was very pleased at how many companies chose that category because they're, they're proud to be a family business and they wanna be recognized for that. So we added that in 2023. And then the last change that we made uh, is each year we honor an executive of the year. Well, being that we now have our business you know, for-profit businesses. A few years ago, we added nonprofit businesses and now we added family business last year. We decided to recognize an executive of the year in each one of those categories. So that's something new in 2024. I'll pause for a moment there to see if anybody has a question about any of the um, events I've talked about so far. We're going to go into more detail on how to nominate in the next slide, but I just thought I'd stop here. I have a quick question about the leaders in real estate construction and design. Yes. Uh, I saw that come up in the, e the promotional email for this webinar, and it said, uh, I just want to clarify, you said that top projects is a new category in that award submission, because yes. I also Googled and it says like March 3rd or something like that for a top projects in New Jersey award. Right, that's for the nomination date. You're seeing yeah. a nomination date there. So, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you, when you go to njbiz.com slash events, you'll see our leaders in real estate construction and design um, logo. If you click mm -hmm. on that, where it says nominate now, you'll be asked, where do you want to nominate? In the real estate construction and design traditional or in the top projects because they're two different nomination forms. Okay. They are part of one, the same program. Okay. Now in 2025, if, if from what I'm, I'm hoping is we get such a great response to that, it might become its own event. Um, but in 2024, as of right now, it's part of the leaders in real estate construction and design which I will mention in previous years has been virtual, but it is an in-person award event in 2024. It'll be, um, it'll be something that's live and in-person and have the, you know, the networking component to it. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a question before I move on to the next slide? Okay, great. Okay easier nomination process. This has been my goal um, for years to make it simpler. And I think we have, we found the magic sauce. It is pretty simple to nominate. We just ask some basic information and then a 200 word narrative as to why you think this company or this individual is deserving of this award. And the reason that we do that is because many times someone who's nominating might not have all the details of what we need regarding education or experience or but they know that they've worked with this person or they you know in a, in a vendor client capacity or they're a colleague of them they, they don't know everything about them so we've made it easier 
just tell us why you think this person deserves to be an honoree. What happens is the events team, we will go through it. If we feel, yes, this person does qualify, they will move on to phase two. And in the phase two category, that's when we ask for more. So I'll cover that a little bit more in depth momentarily. We ask you that when you're nominating, you can self-nominate or you could nominate someone else. So there's no shame in self-nominating. I'm going to say probably about 30% of our nominations are self-nominations. And if you're wondering like, well, that, you know, that kind of looks not great. No one knows. The only people who really know you've self-nominated is myself and Melissa. So if you feel uncomfortable with that, please don't. Um, eligibility. Each program has its own uh, distinct eligibility. Please read it. If you're unclear or you're questioning any of the eligibility, reach out to Melissa or myself. We'll share that information, our contact information later, but you should have my contact information from the email. Um, and we're happy to discuss it with you and, and make it clearer. I can't state this enough. When you nominate someone, please give us their contact information. It'll say nominee name, nominee title, nominee email. Because if we do approve them and they move on to phase two, we have to deal with that person. You're kind of removed from it. So if we don't have the proper contact information, we can't do that. And then also we have a referral program. So there are some people who may be like, I don't know enough to give you 200 word narrative about this person, but they're awesome. You should have them on your radar. Let us know, email us and give us their name, their company uh, and their email contact or phone number or whatever. And Melissa or I will reach out to them and let them know, hey, this person uh, suggested you for this program. Here's a link if you're interested in moving further. Or if you prefer to be anonymous, we could do that as well. So I just want everyone to know that if you don't feel the, the wherewithal to nominate, you can refer and we welcome that. Now, once the nomination process is over, we move into phase two. And we ask, nominate early, it helps your candidate. If you nominate early, they will get the phase two application earlier uh, in, in the uh, process. So that gives them more time to put together their answers and not have to rush it. Because it's, you know, it, it can, it, they're not difficult. Believe me, phase two is, is things that they know. It, they're talking about themselves, right? Nobody knows you better than you. That's why we ask for the important information of the nominee so we can contact them. Um, and so the earlier that you nominate, the earlier that they'll get phase two and it, it proves to be helpful. Our nomination deadlines are just that. We will, that's the deadline. However, I'll say it, we do keep the forms open because we often will get a request. So we keep the, um, we'll keep the portal open, but it will take away time from your candidate to complete phase two. And there's also an extra processing fee because now it's it's outside of our loop and it's you know it's extra work. So any questions about the nomination process before I go on? And you could ask now or we could cover it at the end as well. All right, I'm gonna move on then. Okay, so what are the next steps? You have nominated um, your, your candidate, they have gone through phase two. We then take this information from the nomination that you provided the narrative and also from what is on the phase two. And we uh, send it to an independent panel of judges. NJ Biz does not judge our events. We don't select the winners. We have an independent panel of judges. The independent panel is made up predominantly of previous honorees for the same award. So if we are judging leaders in finance, the judges are made up of honorees from that program over the last few years. We feel that they, A, they have that expertise, 
but also many of them, they know the process. They, they know how difficult it is um, to go through it. So they're really, they're really spending the time and attention that's necessary. And they like to pay it back. They reach out to me, you know, cause they, they know this process. And so we, we are never uh, lacking for people to judge. Once the judges have gone through everything, they will uh, complete a score sheet. The scores come back to us. The scores are calculated. Um, and I will say Melissa does the heavy lift on the calculating and putting all the judges scores together. And then it goes by who rises to the top. So we'll look at the scores and we'll see where there's a natural break. Um, so if everyone is scoring in the 90s and then the next lowest score is like 82, we know that's the natural break. So the folks above that, those are our honorees for that program. We then will notify the honoree as well as the nominator if they have made it uh, and we're congratulating them. If they have not been chosen, the regrets email, so we call it, will only go to them. We, some of the, you know, the, the nominees, they prefer not to have everybody know if they didn't make it, it's up to them. Uh, so if you haven't heard anything, you can reach out to Melissa or myself, we'll tell you if the program has come to, you know, uh, completion, the nomination process is over and the selection has been made. Um, we also publicize the honorees. So I'll talk about that in the next screen. Once they're notified, we invite them to attend an info session, which is a little bit like what we're doing today, but we will walk them through all of the next steps. Uh, the information form that we need. <laughs> we request uh, photos from them. We request videos from them. We So we talk about the various things that come next. So they're not overwhelmed because when you get the email, there's so many next steps, but there's simple next steps, but it can look overwhelming. So we invite them to this info session to make it simpler uh, for, for them. And so it's more enjoyable. Okay, so moving on, what are the benefits of being an honoree at, for one of our programs? Well, first, once the honorees are selected, as I mentioned before, we there's an announcement in our NJBiz print edition, in our NJBiz digital edition, and also there is uh, an individual email that will go out to our 90 plus um, I'm sorry, our 90 plus subscribers, digital subscribers, announcing the honorees for this program. In addition, they will get a quarter page profile in the event supplement. So each event will have a supplement, in, whether it's in person or virtual, and that person will receive a profile in that supplement. Uh, they're celebrated at the awards program. They're invited to attend. If it's an in-person, they get a complimentary ticket. If it's virtual, they get a complimentary ticket to attend the virtual. And they um, there's no fee involved in any of this. We also uh, will give them a custom desktop award. So when the events are wonderful, the events are mostly morning events, summer evening, but we start with a breakfast and networking, then we go into the ceremony. Each um, honoree is asked to come to the stage and accept their award. There's a photo op. And then um, after everyone's award, we conclude. So it, it's a lovely morning. Also, they will get an eight week complimentary subscription to NJBiz if they're new subscribers. And we do this so they can see all of the their announcements and, and whatnot. So there's, you know, never a charge to win. There's a nomination fee and we do that because we only want serious nominees. But after the nomination, if you're selected as an honoree, there's no charge. Um, we often have companies who would like to place congratulatory ads in the supplement or some folks might want to sponsor or, you know, obviously buy tickets for friends, colleagues, family. 
But for the honoree themselves, there's no additional cost. So if you have questions, here are some ways that you can find out information. If you go to njbiz.com slash events, you'll see all of our nominations there. You could email us at events at njbiz.com. And events at njbiz.com is a mailbox shared by several of us. So myself, Melissa, and a few other folks. So usually if you want the qu quickest response, that's a good place to go. And then phone 732-246-5713. That's Melissa's direct line. 5717 is my direct line. And Melissa and I, we answer our telephones. Um, sometimes a question, especially eligibility questions, seem to be a little more complicated. So people will um, prefer to call to ask that question. And we're happy, happy to take your calls. So I am going to stop sharing my screen now. And this way I can kind of see everybody. And if you'd like to come off mute and ask a question or put a question in the chat, we're happy to answer them. I try to make, you know, add as many details as I could to the presentation, but um, in case I missed something, I'm happy to answer your questions now. Okay. Wow. Looks like I did a good job. Yeah, I've got a question oh, about perfect. the... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, for the for the score sheets that the judges go through, can you provide can you provide any detail if you can about specifically what you know they're what they're scoring yeah. on or what process the judges go through, like what they're looking for in, in more detail? Yes. So you'll notice when the application comes in, the application, the questions we ask are really the categories that they're being judged on. So if it asks for education, that's one part, experience. Um, we may, it, it's, it's hard to say because there are so many different events and they all vary, but a good uh, rule of thumb is if you're being asked for details about it on the application, that's being incorporated into the score sheet. So it's, um, the narrative is, is like, nice for the judges to see because it gives them another perspective and they are asked for an overall score, but it will ask like achievements or, um, you know, if it's a company, it might be like gross or, so it really varies. But if you look at the application, you'll, you can see the questions we're asking where they'll fall under. Any other questions? Wonderful. Well, we've recorded this session and uh, I should be able to send it out to everybody within the next day or two. So please feel free to share it with others on your team. If you think of a question after this, then just reach out to uh, the emails that we've shared, events at njbiz.com, and we will be very happy to help you. If there's nothing else, I think we can end for this afternoon. Great. Well, thank you all again, and I look forward to seeing those nominations come in. Take care. <laughs>